So, Michael, we've been celebrating and giving thanks for uh, our great guests throughout the brief history of the show. What is this show? What? Right. Uh, 50 September. September 14th. Like yeah. Yeah. And this is like, um, what is this, 54? 53. Something like that. We've had some great ones. We've had some great ones. But, I mean, we're about to outdo ourselves now because we, we, we're about to be joined by the GOAT, one of my favorite people, one of my favorite parents, and a lot of people's favorite player, uh, Candace Parker, future basketball Hall of Famer, Candace Parker. Fun fact, Candace knows this. Mason, when he plays 2K, he plays as Candace Parker. And you know why he does that? First of all, he loves Candace Parker, Michael. Everybody loves Candace Parker. Um, That's right. Super mom and mogul uh, beyond her sterling basketball resume. But Candace has helped me parent my children. Because Candace, remember, you remember this? Like, at the beginning of the pandemic, my kids were looking at me like it was my fault they had to stay inside. Candace was like, let me talk to Mason. <laughs> Candace got on FaceTime. Mason was like, look, your dad is responsible for you. It doesn't matter what your friends do. And it's the same, mind you, it's the same thing I'm saying, Michael, but it hit different when it's coming from a Hall of Famer. And Mason, uh, he was like, yes, Ms. Parker. Yes, Ms. Parker. <laughs> that was it. So uh, appreciate you, Candace Parker, for joining us. How are you doing? Happy Thanksgiving. Good to see you. How's everybody? Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, obviously, sending love to you and your family and everybody. Um, doing well. You know, I'm in California, just getting ready for Thanksgiving and, and this holiday season in a different way, but still so thankful for sure. What's on the menu? What you cooking up? That's right. So, what, that's what we want to know. Okay, so my mom is here. She, her specialty is dressing. So my mom has to make the dressing for sure. I'm a corn pudding. I don't know if you have that on your menu, but my grandma used to make corn, corn pudding, pudding every Thanksgiving. And mm. I will send you a picture tomorrow. That is like something we do. My grandma passed away. And so that's like what we do for her every Thanksgiving. We mm. make corn pudding. Uh, you know, obviously the turkey, yams. Uh, let's see what else we got. My mom makes a chocolate pie that's really good. We got greens mm. on the menu. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna oh, do greens. we're gonna some good greens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> greens, beans, good tomatoes. Greens. That's <laughs> so wait, but but, but, <laughs> but what are you? What are you? Because you're you're a jack of many trades. You are, have many many skills. What are you putting your foot in, Candace Parker? That's what we want to know. So I actually um am going to cook. I mean, my mom and I we we. We kind of cook in the kitchen together, so I'll probably uh, do the corn pudding. I'll do – she does the cornbread. Um, I might get on the grill tomorrow. I'm like lamb – I'm feeling like some lamb chops, so we might have turkey Ooh, okay. lamb. Um, yeah, so we're going to make mac and cheese, so we're, uh, right. we're having – we're going to have a – we're going to have a nice little spread. <laughs> All right. Now, is that – am I seeing a picture of your daughter behind you? Is that a picture of you and your daughter? Yes. So that's when we won yeah. the championship in 2016. And this is my favorite picture of us of all time. So I always keep it behind my desk. And it's, uh, she's, she's telling me, mommy, we did it. And I'm like in tears. I love and it. so like my favorite picture of all time. <laughs> and how, how old was she in, in that picture? She was seven turning eight and she just lost her two front teeth. Like the cutest, I mean, just the most supportive uh, let her tell it. She'll tell the story about when she when we won the championship. She'll always talk about how she was the only one wearing purple in the entire arena, and everybody was cheering for the Lynx. And she said, "But we we won." So I will, I will always remember this, and this will always be close by. This is my favorite picture by far. Uh, that's great. I, I, I'm wondering, that, you know, to bring it back to the food because you know what, you know, we we got three kids, and uh, I don't think they started to really appreciate that good stuff, the good food until like a couple years ago. And my wife would say like, why are we doing all this stuff? And they pretty much, they, they want some hot dogs or something. Like, you know, how about your daughter? Did your, when did your daughter get to the point where she really appreciated the good stuff that you're making on Thanksgiving? When I tell you, we have this spot in Malibu that we go to on like Saturdays or Sundays, we'll drive to like do the sand dunes or drive PCH and just enjoy the day. And so, I really like the fish and chips from this one restaurant, it's Malibu Seafood, and um, they usually have a line out back. And so last weekend we did Christmas pictures, so we stopped to get some Malibu Seafood. So, you know, I got the fish and chips, and I was like, Layla, what do you want? She was like, the lobster. 
Like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, how is the steamed lobster? Like, are they going to grill it or is it steamed? So my child has an uh, amazing palate. She's been everywhere and in the entire world. She's been to Russia, Turkey, China. Um, you know, she tries a lot of different things. And so honestly, like, she is, I told her, I was like, you better be able to pay for your food when you're older because, man, well, <laughs> like, you're well, eating me out I mean, of home. Well, for, I, I, that's why I introduced you as one of my favorite parents, because you're doing it right. I mean, listen, Layla, Layla is a team owner now. Like, we got to talk <laughs> about this, this power move. Uh, so you and Layla are part of the ownership group, officially part of the ownership group for the National Women's Soccer League, uh, LA Angel City. Like, tell me about that, uh, you know, that process and, and, and that motivation on your part to, to, to make your daughter a team owner, which just sounds so cool to even say. I imagine it's just cool to to call her a colleague, right? Well, Michael, honestly, and I, I love meeting people like yourself that are, you know, really into like teaching kids and teaching your kids and having them around. I mean, it, the conversations we've had when your kids walk in and you're in meetings and they're able to kind of see what you do. And for me, you know, everybody talks about generational wealth, but like generational knowledge is just so much more, more important. And so with that being said, like, I really wanted her to be a part of this. And and honestly, I could see if we didn't start supporting women's sports in about 10 years, Layla was going to be like, hey, so mom, you tell everybody else to support women's sports. How come we're not? Mm. And honestly, you got to put your money where your mouth is sometimes. And I can't be the one that's out saying how important it is for us to invest in women's sports and, you know, all that and not do it myself. And so honestly, I grew up playing soccer that was my first sport in 96 when I watched the Olympics, watched Mia Hamm, mm. watched Brandy Castain, watched all of them. Uh, I pictured myself in a soccer jersey with a gold medal around my neck. I, it wasn't basketball. And so for that, you know, to have this opportunity uh, to go out on the field and be with Mia Hamm, like that was yeah. that's crazy to me. And so it, it's a huge opportunity for myself, for my daughter. Now, Michael, she is a little like the next day when we, you know, we, everything was announced. <laughs> drinking her tea with her pinky up. And I was like, Layla, you need to chill. <laughs> One little soccer team, and now you're drinking your tea with your pinky up. <laughs> yeah. She goes, she, she, pretty soon she's going to tell you she got a meeting. She can't talk to you. Yeah, right? <laughs> she's going to be on a conference call. <laughs> she's going to do yeah, the whole, hold up, like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, you know, Candace, I, I'm, I'm so happy to hear you talk about uh, women's sports and just uh, a few minutes ago on the screen, it says you're you know, a two-time WNBA MVP. And I wonder uh, if you have an opinion on something I read earlier this week I thought was fantastic from Cynthia Cooper, the Players' Tribune, four-time, four straight championships for the Houston Comets. And she just talked about how there was no outlet for her. Uh, when she came out of college, you know, she was a great player, had to spend 10 years overseas. And then when she was a 34-year-old rookie, in the WNBA, but I, I think her she made a lot of good points, but I, I want to get your opinion on her point of why don't we talk about the lineage of GOATs, whether we're talking about men like Michael Jordan and Kobe and LeBron and women from, you know, Diana Taurasi and, and Cynthia Cooper and uh, Candace Parker uh, and, and also just the just conversation about women's sports in general. Just, uh, just your thoughts on, on some of the things that she had to say, because I thought they were great. Well, Cynthia Cooper, honestly, was right around the time the Comets were winning championships right around the time where I fell in love with basketball. The inaugural season of the WNBA was when I was 11 years old. And I remember sitting on the couch watching the tip off of the L.A. Sparks and the New York Liberty game. And it was at that moment where I didn't have to go in my driveway and shoot like Michael Jordan. I could go in my driveway, raise the roof like Cynthia Cooper, uh, cross people over like, you know, like Cheryl Swoops, shoot that turnaround like Tina Thompson. I mean, everybody was trying to be a Houston Comet. And Cynthia Cooper was a major reason why. And she's a major reason why we have a league to play in to begin with. And so for me, you know, I think when you're playing the court, nobody has won four straight WNBA championships at that point in her career. Uh, when you listen, I don't know if anybody has tuned into the, to the Women of Troy documentary, which talks about another mm -hmm. amazing player in Cheryl Miller, who I think would have been the be all end all hands down best player ever had she not got injured. But you're right. It does need to be mentioned. Goat is a goat. It doesn't matter uh, if it's women's basketball or men. And honestly, 
I mean, Kobe was the men's basketball player that really acknowledged that, that acknowledged that we're athletes and that we, we train and play and, and work just as hard as, you know, as the men. And so, you know, I do think she made extremely valid points. And listen, at the end of the day, everybody's going to debate. You know, you play basketball, you, you you hang up your shoes, and then there's the next best thing coming in. And so I think for for me, if you leave an impact, if you leave an imprint anywhere you go, if you leave a legacy in a league on somebody's life, whatever, you inspire, you've done your job. Uh, a lot's happened since you, you and I last caught up, Candace. Uh, in particular, uh, we have had an election. Uh, we have a black woman in the White House, not as first lady this time, but as vice president. Uh, going back to, to you and Layla, which is where our conversations always start and end, it's like, kind of catch me up on the conversations you've been having with Layla, you know, throughout the election, post-election, uh, and as we kind of get toward the end of a, of a very tumultuous year, to say the least. Michael, a lot has happened since we've had a conversation, and honestly, <laughs> You know, the day that um, the election was called and, and, and Kamala was going to be uh, vice president, I remember telling Layla, you know, look, like, you can be anything you want to be. You know, look, there's a, a woman of color in the White House. And she was like, who said I couldn't before? And so I think huh. that there's so much hope that I have for this next generation, because I feel as though when I'm showing her things that I think are barriers, she didn't see them as such. And so now we're having more visibility and that's so important for our young girls and our young boys to be able to see women in leadership positions. And who would have, if you could have been somebody, a betting person, you would have said that a woman of color would have been in the White House before and in, in, in the vice president position before a man, a, an, a man of color in that same position, I would have told you you were crazy. And hmm. so honestly, at, at the end of the day, um, she's the first person of color. She is the first woman uh, vice president. And honestly, she's representing so many. And, you know, I hope she opens so many doors, which she will. And I hope so many more follow uh, and in and, and their footsteps. And I think that, you know, in a way it'll change the perception of women as leaders and in the boardroom yes. and across the board, because I think that's what needs to change. I don't know if there's, we're not ready for the job. I think it's more so just being able to look at, be looked at and have an opportunity. Yeah, that's why we always vibe. I mean, and I love that Layla said that. That sounds like your child that would say, who said I couldn't, who said I couldn't before? Because I've said it all along. It was, I, th I think it's actually more important for guys to see it because it's not that women couldn't or can't, it's that we won't let them. And we just need to That's be right. more comfortable seeing women in positions of authority and submitting to said authority. Um, you're also a hell of an authority on sports in general, but one of the best uh, analysts out there. I guess I'll just give you a broad, you know, a broad alley-oop just since we've had, you know, the draft and free agency, you know, the first weekend of free agency in the NBA. What to you uh, is the story of this unusual and truncated NBA offseason. NBA is right around the corner. You know, whether it's a team, a player who moved, a player who may move. What's the story of the NBA offseason for you right now? Honestly, the story of the NBA, I think there's there's two spotlights for me. First of all, if the Lakers aren't representing, you know, the the belief and the the notion that it's you can't be satisfied. Like, you can't just yeah. say, well, we won last year, and so this will work next year. And that's that's the case. That's complacency. That's um, not a champion. And honestly, the Lakers reloaded. If you look at the moves yeah, that man. they made that they didn't necessarily have to make, uh, Schroeder and Harold alone, uh, Montrez Harold, are going to change the energy, the pace, everything that the Lakers play with. And they're going to really fill in those roles. So I'm really looking at that. And then also... Up and coming team, Atlanta Hawks, one of the worst teams in the NBA last year. Yeah. Trey Young was a bright spot, uh, but this third year is going to be really telling. And for Atlanta to go ahead and get Brogdon, to go ahead and get Rajon Rondo, which will serve as kind of that mentor towards uh, Trey Young, I think that they're a team that you know really could make some noise if they all buy into to, to Lloyd Word. Pierce and their system. Yeah. So, so uh, Candace, my, my final question for you has to do uh, with your Instagram. 
Great stuff on IG, for <laughs> sure. One thing I'm fascinated by, and you just tell me how, how this hits you. Your conversation with Jamie Foxx, I was just like, <laughs> oh my God. Like, he's sitting there going from Kermit the Frog to Jay-Z to Dave Chappelle, Mike, I'm like, what, what is go what's going on with this dude? If anybody doubts how talented Jamie Foxx is, the goat. I mean, you could just watch that sound bite, that conversation. He is one of the most talented individuals ever. And he does it in a way that is like, how do you, how are you mastering these voices? And he does it through singing, through pitch, through music. And I mean, he's one of the funniest human beings alive. He continues to keep us laughing. Every time I see him, he's such a LeBron fan. So anytime LeBron does anything, <laughs> he's texting me and telling me like the king and all that. So, and I love it. His daughter is super into basketball, so it's fun for me. We talked about having them team up because they're both extremely tall, and so we're like, we could have a super team in high school. Uh, but Jamie Foxx is one of the most talented human beings, and I cannot wait for this, uh, you know, Mike Tyson movie. When it does come out, I'm going to be front row eating my popcorn watching this guy kill it because he's so talented. Candace, it, it, well, Mike, he was doing the impressions, Mike. Oh, I saw her. And had the content. So yeah. it's, it's one thing to have the voice, but he's in character with the, yeah. with things that they would say. You could hear them yes. say, like, and Candace said at one point, you could actually call into a radio station and they would believe that you were this person. Absolutely. I mean, it's one thing. It's Jay -Z, one thing. His Jay-Z was ridiculous. I mean, Mike Tyson, yeah. Jay-Z, all that. That was, for him to switch from Kermit the Frog to Jay was, was unbelievable. It's uh, he, he's always been my, my favorite entertainer because it's one thing to be great. It's one thing to be good at, 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 a, at a number of things, talented at a number of things, but not only is he exceptionally gifted at a number of things, but successful as well. Actor, musician, stand-up, comedian, can hold his own across the board. As can you. It takes one to know one, Candace. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the time. Congratulations on Defensive Player of the Year. Haven't seen you since right anymore. To your trophy you. case, uh, thank Candace you. Parker, just thank you so much. Uh, my sister from another mister. Uh, appreciate you joining the show. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.